To tie our slip knot, we are going to take our silk on the inside of our arm, wrap up to the sky, find our tail with our free hand, and bring it to our shoulder. From here, we are going to clear our wrist, and we can slide our hand down to create a lower slip knot. Give your tail to your other hand or the wrapped hand. Now your free hand can reach under the loop to grab the post, which is around your wrist. That hand is now going to pull the silk towards it or the post towards it to open up a loop and pull your tail towards you until you've got about a foot and pull that strongly to the floor. To untie your slip knot, find your two tails and pull them apart. To tie a slip knot at the correct height each time takes practice, so I'm going to tie it again. To do my pullover, I am going to pull my silk behind me, thumbs facing up, pull down in a pull up as I bring my hips into the knot, making sure I'm actually on my hip bone and not on my stomach. Release the arms, bring it all the way across to the opposite side, feet come up high, and I'm going to allow myself to rotate around into a sitting position. Another method to do my pullover entry is to pull my tail onto my shoulder, pull my silks apart in front of me, making sure thumbs are facing up, pull down as I bring my hips into the knot. From here, I'm going to keep chest up tall, feet up high. For open butterfly, I'm going to thread one arm through the middle and find my edge. The edge is a coiled piece of silk. You can hold just your edge or more than your edge, but you do need to have your edge. Thumbs should be facing down for this skill. Free leg comes to our knee, and we're going to lean forward. Once we find both edges, finding your edges can be tricky and a little time consuming. It just takes a little bit of practice. To get out, bring your hips and then your shoulders back through your silk. For bow and arrow, I'm going to turn to one side, lean against my back silk, hands at my heart are lower, and bow, making sure not to catch the free leg on the back silk. For thread through dive, I'm going to go to backpack, reinvert into my straddle back, bring both legs together in front of my face, bending one knee over both to go to gazelle. From gazelle, I'm going to climb above my knee. I'm going to keep climbing until the live end or post is all the way in my hip. I'm going to take the top side or the same side as the Hooked leg, reach through, regrip, and go to star or keeping my arms at T as I rotate over. This can be a little tricky to get it correct, so I'm going to play it for you again.
American Trail consists of three skills, American, uh, American Trail, Reverse American Trail, and Cuddle. We're going to start in straddle back, crochet one leg, reach up high with our opposite hand, and pull that silk into our armpit. To get to reverse, we're going to bring up our free leg, press it against the silk, unthread our originally crocheted leg, and thread it back through the space between the silk and the leg so that the silk is on the outside of our thigh. Sit back up. To get into cuddle, we are going to bring both legs up onto that silk. So we're going to bring our free leg up, hug it on top of the other, and then bring our other silk or opposite silk into our shoulder. To get out, you can bring one or both hands to the silk that has both your knees and pull the set up. This skill has a lot of steps, so I'm going to do it one more time in slow motion. For standing star, I'm going to reach up high, lean back, bring one leg up as high as I can, pressing out to straddle, drag the other leg up, pull myself into a standing position, and press my arms out. If you are unbalanced, you can bring your hands higher to even yourself out. We want to create a box with this move. Slide your feet together to come down. This can be a little tricky to get it correct, so I'm going to play it for you again. To complete Lady in the Moon, I'm going to turn to one side, bring my hand down to my heart, press against my front silk, use my free leg to press my back silk back, and look for my hand arching my back. For a false footlock, I'm going to lean against the opposite side. Bring both hands to that side and follow the big toe of the free leg around. For half moon roll up, I'm going to lean against the same side, follow the big toe around, press the back silk down to my ankle, above the X, and roll on top. I can repeat this as many times as I'd like. Typically, our goal is three or until our back says stop. We do want to make sure we are pushing that silk all the way down to our ankle. If it is at your knee, it will stop you from rotating. You want to make sure you're resting your stomach and chest against the front silk. To get out of this, follow your knee around or roll out the opposite direction you rolled in. And if you have a false footlock or in slip knot, you will have to rotate one extra time. Typically, how many times we roll in is how many times we roll out. 